boys and girls, this is Jerome. I'm in action with episode number two of Draco Plays Batania for 1.12.2. So today's episode, we've actually got a lot of stuff planned. And I actually have a planning document, believe it or not. Um, forgot to put it on the screen there. So this document's reminding me of everything I want to do in this video. So maybe it'll be a lot of fun, you never know. Kind of hope so, cross my fingers. Uh, well, first things first, I've done some expansion, as you can see right here. When we left off the other day, there were only, well, there was only one flower. That one was right there behind my head. Now there are four. Why did I do that? Pretty simple. I mean, if any common sense, you can figure that out. One, if one does eight, four does 32. So I needed more blocks. And I don't want to sit here and have to wait one minute for every eight. You can do as many of these as you want to. It's, they don't affect each other. You know, we went through the blocks in the book the other day of what they actually do affect. So I figured it would just be easier to go ahead and do four of them. That's what I normally do anyway. Now later on, in a few more episodes, once we get more mana production and more things going, I will actually show you how to completely automate the living rock and living wood process. It's pretty simple to do. Um, something else I did, and I don't know why I didn't think about this in the last episode. This is pretty derpy of me. You now we put a hydrangea here and a hydrangea here. And just had it shooting into uh, the mana pool. Well, I forgot the way you're supposed to set this up is you do one on each corner of an infinite water pool. So after the episode was over, I probably spent about two to two and a half hours uh, just doing some resource gathering in between episodes. In between one and the first episode and this one. So I just laid down eight hydrangeas and let them go to town and do their thing. Um, so it's been at least two hours since all of them have died off. Because the, the initial two died and then I put two more in their place. So that's at least two hours because it takes one hour for each one to die. So that's not too bad there. Is it already going down? No, not yet. Actually, maybe it is. Yeah, the sun is going down. Crud. I thought I started this episode in the morning. Um, well, I can still show you a few things before I go take a quick nap. So, I showed episode one to the almighty Criddleses yesterday. She got a kick out of it. And her partner in crime, the one, the only, of the goats. That's actually his screen name. I don't know what it means. Uh, apparently he's got some sort of infatuation with goats. But... He complained because I told them before I did the start of the series I'd only be playing with one mod because I wanted to show it off. And then in the first episode I listed a few mods. And he was like, Draco, that is not how you said you were going to do it. I got fussed out on stream yesterday. I fussed back, of course, because, you know, he uses the name Coats. It's kind of funny. And I decided today we would do a little something to honor the goats. Because why not? So, we have a potato here, and this potato is going to represent something. We're going to throw it in here, and now we have, let's see, it didn't even show it in my hand, it's so small, a tiny potato. Now, I don't, I tried to get enough iron between episodes, because I was going to name the thing, and I couldn't get enough iron. So, from now, I can't name it, but, let's see. We'll stick it right there. And we'll say just be friends. I will name it later. This guy's name will be Goats. Then every now and then we just come through and whack it. And he'll dance trying to be happy because he's getting whacked. We all know that's the Goat's real purpose in life. It is just to get whacked with a sword. Or an axe. Or, you know, you can shovel him a little bit if you want to. Whack, whack. Goats, take that. Take that. Goats, take that. I also, in his honor, added another mod to the playthrough. That's right, Goats. There's another mod in here just for you. Actually, no, it's not for you. It's for the rest of the viewers, but I knew you'd enjoy it. These are regular crafting crafting benches. See? Nothing special. Just a plain old, look in the tooltip on the top left, plain old Minecraft bench. But the one I added is called, let me look over here on the other screen... 
It's called Real Bench, R-E-A-L Bench, all one word. And it's made by a developer named Prototik, P-R-O-T-O-T-I-K. You can get it off Forge or Twitch, you know, whatever your chosen thing is. And it does one thing. When you open up a crafting table, put things in it, like if I put my bed right there, it leaves it on there so you can see it. And then it rotates it around so no matter where you're standing, it's always facing up for you. Other mods add that, but they add a bunch of other stuff, like Tinker's Construct will do this, but it adds a ton of other stuff that I didn't want in this particular playthrough because I wanted very, very simple things. Things that don't change the way the game plays. Except for Vein Miner, which is now in here, by the way. So, now I can show you what we're planning on doing. To me, it made a little bit of sense. So, what we're going to do here is... Oh, wait, one more thing. Uh, one of the commenters, I forgot to write down your name, dude, I'm sorry, asked what kind of shaders I was using, and they're turned off right now because I went caving and it was just too dark in the caves. So let's turn the shaders on so I can show him, this was it, Seuss Renewed 1.0.0. So we'll turn those back on too. It's going to take a minute, so I'll, there we go. Done, done, done. Perfect. So these are the shaders I was using. Seuss Renewed 1.0.0. So if anybody wanted to know, now you know. That's what made this, makes this world look so cool. Okay, so we talked about the shaders. So check that off the list. Now we need some things to make this world a better place. Uh, the very first resource we need to make is called Mana Steel. M-A-N-A -A Steel. And the way, the way you make that is you just take some iron and you throw it in here and see right there it says iron check mark into mana steel mana steel looks like this now i've already got three pieces inside because when i was caving i found another spider spawner in that chest there are three pieces of mana steel so i wanted enough mana steel to make a full set of armor because the armor gives you bonuses so we're going to throw in all this and just see what we actually know let's throw let's see i need a few more things before i throw all the iron in there i need one piece of this I need either a diamond or an ender pearl. And I, I got one of those. Uh, which one was it? Diamonds. I need one diamond for some of the stuff we're going to make. Perfect. So we've got a mana diamond. We have mana glass. So if there's anything else on here we need. I think we're good for now. If not, I'll pause the video and make some more mana. So let's just see how much this gets us. All right. Hey, and we still got mana left over. That's not too bad for simple flowers, right? This thing, remember I told you in the first video, this thing holds a ton of mana. So let's see here. So let's go see what, oh, come back. We are gonna make a few things. Oh, I know there's something else I wanted to make. We do need to dunk something else in there. We need, one piece of grass. And the grass, you know how to get grass. You just take your shears and you hit some grass with it. So let's do that. Because I need to make a pasture seed. So there's your pasture seed right there. And here's what we're going to do. First thing I want to make is this right here. Um, this is called a horn of the wild. This, to me, is one of the coolest things in the game. Let's see, where's an area that I want to clear? If I stand right here. Check that out. I know that was a little bit loud. I apologize. I didn't watch my sounds were that high. But that is a very, very cool way to clear off a bunch of grass at once. That is so much faster than a water bucket, right? Now, holding in your hand has cool applications. But, you can do more with it. I'm just going to pick up all this real quick. We're going to make some more stuff with it in just a minute. Like, for example, let's throw it in here. Actually, no, I'm not going to throw it in here yet. What this will do, this makes a drum of the wild. But we need something else before we can use the drum of the wild. So we'll hold off on that for just a second. Check out how much area that cleared, by the way. 
Imagine using that in, say, a villager automated farming field. That'd be pretty cool, right? We're going to do better than that, though. Okay, so that's the first thing. Let me think. Let me think. Next thing we're going to make is, I want to say, the monocle. Yes. So the monocle is one piece of mana steel, one mana glass. And bam! Now we got a monocle. We take that, we throw this into our bobble slot, we get an achievement in our art, which just means we wore a bobble. And here's what the monocle does. So I come over here, and I need to know the range of a flower, because every flower has a different range of how far it's effective. Oh, let me turn the shaders back off. Some of these don't play nice with the shaders. What the monocle is going to do, though, is actually will give you a, an overlay showing you the range of the flower, so you know exactly where that flower is going to work. Just like that. So that shows you, you know, I told you it worked in a 3x3 three three area. There you go, right there. Same thing for all of these. So now we know how far those flowers will work. If I had more hydrangeas in here, it would show me that it's just a area right around it as well. So now you know, pretty cool, right? And you can see that from far, from a pretty decent distance. Now we can set up things. That'll come in handy when we start using what do you call them, uh, active flowers, passive flowers instead. So now I've got the monocle, and if I wasn't wearing sunglasses on my character skin, it would show up pretty neat on my face. Okay, so now we've got the monocle, we've got mana steel, showed you how to make mana glass. Now we need some way to, let's want to make uh, the armor. So we'll just do that here. So the armor is standard, like there's my helmet, there's my boots, Shift more info shows you this, by the way. When you're wearing a mana steel set, that means all four pieces like you see on the screen there, everything costs 10% less mana. So that's going to come in handy for everything else that we do. Now, there's, there are better armors later in the game that we're going to get to. So that one, and how do you do this other one like that? Yeah. First, let's put these on. Pop. That works right there, right? Perfect. Hey, now you can see the monocle better, too. Um, the other armor does look better. That's really funky looking. It used to cover more of you than that. So the other armor we're going to go for... It's going to look like this. Let's just do helmet. So we've got the basic level. That's the basic tier. Then you go up to elementium armor, which gives you another 10% reduction. It also grants Fairy's Blessing. Fairy's Blessing says that... Oh, they changed it. Okay. Apparently the pixies that come off... It used to be if you got hit while wearing the pink armor, it would send out a pixie randomly, not every time, but sometimes, to attack whatever hit you. So if you're doing PvP, you get extra hits on a player. If you're fighting zombies, it'll go kill zombies for you. It's not a really, really, really deadly thing, but extra damage is extra damage. Apparently now it gives you potion effects instead, so let's hope that's a good thing when we find out. The top tier is called Terror Steel Armor. 20% uh, mana reduction cost. Regen, even if hunger isn't topped off. And passive mana, wow. That's a lot better than it used to be. I haven't used Batania in a while. I didn't realize the bonuses had gone up like that. That's not bad. So... So, the pink and the green armor looks really cool, too. I'm not a fan of the blue, though. Now, the other thing we need is let's go take a nap because creepers have been coming out like crazy. I got creepered again right before I started the video. Oh, got to whack the goats. We'll get him dancing his little happy potato self over there. Okay, so now we're going to make the, the tools. So let's do this first. Let's make a sword. Wait a minute, how do you, do you change that too? Oh, I forgot you could use those. That's right. That's one, two, three. 
three. I need one, two, three, four. Okay. So we won't. I did that backwards. All right. So the first thing is we need a shovel, of course. Then we need a pick. Then an axe. And I think I made a couple too many. Sometimes I can count, sometimes I can't. Y'all know that. And then we got this. Um, honestly, I don't need the potato. So now, that's pretty cool. We have these really cool weapons. And like, let's say, Mana Slacks, Attack of Nine. Attack of Nine. No difference, right? Well, there's about to be. Let's go dump off a couple things so I can make the next thing. Uh, I don't need the bed, the sunflower, those flowers. Oh, I put all the botanical stuff over here, by the way. That way I would not lose it. I don't think I need that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to make really quick is going to be... Got the tools, got the armor. Um, where did you go? Oh yeah, this guy right here. Remember we needed that mana diamond while ago? Well, we need a tablet to store mana in. Because we don't want to leave the mana and the mana pool back there behind us. We want to do more with it. Like, for example, we want to make a band of mana. Why do we want to make that? Because then we don't have to keep the tablet in our inventory taking space. We can put the ring up here and be good to go. Not bad, right? But right now there's no mana in it, so I'm going to show you how that works too. So let's come back sticks. And we also want to do this, because this comes in handy when we're using the Horn of the Wild, or the Lawnmower Horn as I call it. First thing is we need to make one of these. So we're going to make a mana lens. Then we're going to specialize that lens into a magnetizing lens. Uh, oop, I converted all the iron. Well, crud. I've got one piece of iron left back here I didn't smelt. There's the gold. There's the iron. I knew I'd forgotten something. I thought I'd already laid this out over there, though. Get rid of those, get rid of that, get rid of that, 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 because I'm not going to need those anymore. Okay. That now. And we got that. So let's go to put this one on. Actually, I'll show you a different way. If you have it in your bar and you just right click it, it automatically puts it on for you. Let's get our wand. There it is. Let's axe him this time. Now, here's why you want to have the mana when you're wearing the armor and using the tools. First thing I'm going to do is got to set this thing. Sits in bind mode. Show me how much mana is in it. If you hold down shift and right click, so now the arrow goes to the right. That's saying it's going to go from the mana tablet or the ring in our case to the mana pool. We want to go from the pool to the tablet or ring though. So we're going to throw this in, step back, hold down shift, otherwise, because that disables the magnet that we're wearing. And it's already empty. Close enough. Yep, empty. We're going to walk up here, and we're going to do this. Now we're going to wear that. Now if you look at our XP bar, notice we've got just over two bars of flashing blue. That's pretty cool, because here's what happens. Anytime we take damage, it'll come out of that mana. Anytime we take durability damage, it'll come out of that mana until we run out. Pretty nifty, right? So that means I can use this tool without hurting it. So watch this. Now, like I said, I installed Vein Miner in between episodes. Oh, I forgot Vein Miner doesn't work with these. Totally forgot about that. 
see how each one of these is sparkling when it falls? That's because of the magnet ring. Now let's use the magnet ring up here. Notice how everything is coming to me. No more having to run and grab everything. Later on, oh, I already have that pulled up. We can upgrade to the greater ring of magnetization with one piece of terra steel. What that's going to do, it's going to give us an even bigger area to pull stuff from. You're going to see where that really is going to come in handy later. How much area we've already got cleared off here? That looks so much better if all of that grass. Um, let's see here. So now we've got that done. A couple more things I want to show you. Just a nifty little trick. I, I talked through this in the episode episode one, but I actually want to show this off because I had to go out looking for these stupid flowers. And when I say looking, I mean looking. I ended up, let's see if I can turn on waypoints. Yeah, I ended up way out here. That's over a thousand blocks away. And toured all through here just to find the white flowers to make those extra flowers outside. Because I used up all my petals the other day. So let me show you the trick that I mentioned. By the way, you can also make pairs of shears out of these, and it has the same benefit of, not, of using mana instead of durability. But I'm going to save these because there may be something else I want to do with them later. Let's get a few bones. Perfect. Okay, so here's how this works. Plant one. It's not sparkling there. Hit it. Now it's too high. Bam. Now we've got a tall mystical flower, which, look at that, one to four. Now, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One to 16, just like that in two generations. Five, six, seven, eight. Oop, I missed one. I usually don't do more than eight because then I lose track of where they are. So just like that, until we set up automatic flower production, which I'm going to do in the next episode, we can take the flowers that we already have and multiply them. Now, one cool thing with the flower, or one bad thing with the flowers, I should say, is they take a room in the inventory. So if you're carrying stuff with you, you know, you're carrying food, you're carrying your bucket, you got all your tools with you, you start throwing flowers up here, well, you've only got 27 slots. So if you pick up big ones and small ones, there's 16 different colors, so that's 32 slots you can have filled up. Unless you have this. This is called the flower pouch. It takes five pieces of wool and a U-shape and one petal, and they all have to be the same color. So they can be pink or green or lime or whatever. It doesn't matter the color, but they just all have to be the same color. You can make the flower pouch. The way the flower pouch works, oops, that was not flowers. Stud those down, and they eventually do come back. Uh, was it the small ones that does it too? I can't remember. Just open it up and see. Yeah, there we go. It's the small ones that does it too. So now anytime you break the small ones, pick them up, they're going to go into the pouch automatically. It's got all the colors listed there, so if you're looking to get one of each color, there's no achievement for it, but you do need, eventually need all the colors to do things. You can know what you're missing. So if I were to go back over here, and say... Just throw the pink ones in the ground. Oops, I dropped them. I thought it did auto pickup. I guess it doesn't do auto pickup. It used to do auto pickup, but obviously some things have changed since the last time I played the Britannia. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. Oh well. At least we have a place to store them now. And if you notice. I just shift click those into the chest. So watch this. If I went not through this one, white ones won't go because they're too big. Brown ones, black ones. See, there's two, two. Two and two and six. There's the purple ones. Shift click. Bam. Now they're back in here. 
just like that. So now we have a good handy way of storing our flowers whenever we need to go, need to go looking for them. So let's throw those in there for now. Throw those in there for now. Have a little sleep. And let's see if there's anything else that I want to do for this episode. Um, let me get the list here. We got the ring of magnetization. We made a horn of the wild. We made the monocle. Did mana steel and mana glass and mana tablet and a band of mana. Mana steel tools and armor. And we accomplished a lot. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 15 bullet points for this episode. That's why I've been talking so fast. I know this episode... It's coming in right about 30 minutes. I forgot to put my counter on the screen, so I'm not sure exactly how long it is. But I know we're right about 30 minutes. And we're going to get to this next episode. So I'm going to leave that set up for now. But there's one other thing I wanted to cover as I finally set up my own personal Discord. So if anybody out there is interested in joining the Discord, I'll put a link in the description below. Y'all can come by and hang out and talk. And we've even got a private vanilla server that you can come play on. It doesn't have a Tanya on it. But it's a 1.13.2 spigot server. So it doesn't experience the lag of regular vanilla servers, meaning that your elytras work and your other stuff works, as opposed to just firing off an entire stack of rockets trying to fly. So if anybody's interested in that, the link will be down below in the description. And I think that's going to be it for this up. Golly, look at that. All decked out in my armor. So next episode, we're going to go over making your own automated flower farm, which is a lot of fun to do and when I say automated I mean you're gonna set it up and then never touch it again it's really cool the only thing you're gonna have to touch it for is to get the flowers out of it but it's gonna grow the flowers break the flowers collect the flowers and have them in storage waiting for you just to grab them it's really really cool so I will show you that on the very next episode but until then guys thanks for coming out uh, Thanksgiving is tomorrow here in America so if you're watching this upon release this afternoon, have a happy Thanksgiving. If you're watching it somewhere down the road, have a happy whatever today, tomorrow, the next day is going to be for you. And I will see you next time.